Hey everyone, it's Dr. Eda Khan. Welcome back to my channel Medico's Guide. And today we'll be discussing about capsular and non-capsular patterns. So let's start with the introduction. As you know that the scanning examination concept was first created by James Sidex and others. And this is where the term end field, capsular patterns and contractile and inner tissue first appeared. And this made a significant contribution to the creation of thorough and organized physical examination of body's moving parts. Now what are these patterns? Basically, the radiographic appearance of joint involvement in different musculoskeletal disorders, especially in the setting of arthritis, is referred to as capsular and non-capsular patterns. Based on the distribution of joint space narrowing and other related changes visible on imaging investigations like X-rays, these patterns assist clinicians in diagnosing and classifying various kinds of arthritis. Now let's talk about the definitions. So as you know that there are two range of motion patterns that are generally utilized when interpreting joint motions. The first one is capsular pattern of restriction, which is typically seen in cases of arthritis or after extended immobilization. So this is basically a limitation of pain and movement in a joint specific ratio. While any restriction in the joint other than the capsular pattern is known as a non-capsular pattern of restriction. It can be a sign of an extra-articular lesion, a derangement or a restriction of one area of the joint capsule that prevents the joint from moving freely. Now let's talk about the capsular pattern in detail. The capsular pattern is a typical joint involvement distribution in which some movements are more severely restricted than the others. Now it denotes the inflammation of the joint capsule, which is a fibrous covering that surrounds the joint. And this inflammation is usually brought on by inflammatory diseases like arthritis. Certain motions are more impacted than others in the capsular pattern. And people with the same condition tend to exhibit this pattern more consistently. For instance, a capsular pattern in the shoulder frequently shows up as greater restriction in external rotation as opposed to abduction or internal rotation. In inflammatory joint diseases such as psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, and rheumatoid arthritis, capsular patterns are commonly observed. Now let's talk about examination. So for examining the capsular patterns, a complete range of motion must be achieved with passive motion in all conceivable directions. Otherwise, the potential findings will not be elicited by a mid-range movement. The examiner needs to consider the pattern of restriction or limitation while assessing the overall sensations. Capsular patterns are based on clinical findings rather than the research. Perhaps that's why the capsular patterns may be different or inconsistent. There will be a presence of typical pattern in the joint if the capsule of the joint is affected. Each joint has a characteristic pattern of limitation. Capsular pattern cannot judge the end field. Only the joints controlled by muscles exhibit capsular pattern. So these were the characteristics of the capsular pattern. Now let's move on to non-capsular pattern. So when there is a variable distribution of the joint involvement and movement restrictions that do not align with the capsular restriction, the condition is referred to as a non-capsular pattern. Here, the joint movement restrictions in this pattern can appear in any direction and don't follow a set pattern. And what this implies is that structures other than the joint capsule may be involved, including the surrounding muscles, ligaments, and articular cartilage. And now in contrast to capsular patterns, which were commonly observed in the inflammatory joint diseases, the non-capsular patterns are commonly observed in the degenerative joint diseases such as osteoarthritis. In these conditions, joint space narrowing and osteophyte growth are more variable and may not follow a clear pattern of limitation. For instance, with osteoarthritis of the knee, mobility limitation might happen in any direction and doesn't follow a regular pattern as in rheumatoid arthritis. A clinician should be aware of the joint limitation that exists but isn't capsular in nature. For example, in the shoulder joint, in case of subacromial bursitis, abduction may be restricted but with minimal restriction in rotation component of joint. In such cases, the capsular reaction may not be exhibited but other tissues such as ligaments could get adhered. There could be restriction in just one movement or direction with pain where other directions of movement remain pain-free with full range of motion. So other possibilities for joint restriction in one or more directions could be because of loose bodies and or extra-articular adhesions which do not affect the capsule. 
Now let's look at the capsular pattern of various joints in our body. Starting from lower extremity joints, first we have hip joint. Now here the hip joint exhibits flexion that is more limited than internal rotation that is more limited than abduction. Now we have knee joint. Here the flexion is more limited than extension. Then in the tibio fibular there is pain when joint is stressed. Talocrural joint that is our ankle joint. So plantar flexion is more limited than dorsiflexion. In subtalar joint there is limitation of various range of motion. Then in the mid tarsal dorsiflexion is more limited than plantar flexion. Plantar flexion is more limited than adduction, and adduction is more limited than medial rotation. First MTP. Here the extension is more limited than flexion. Now second to fifth MTP, here the pattern is variable. Then in the IP that is interphalangeal joints, so the flexion is more limited than extension. Now let's talk about upper extremity joints. Here the first joint is glenohumeral joint. So here the lateral rotation that is external rotation is more limited than abduction and the abduction is more limited than medial rotation or you can call it internal rotation. Now the sternoclavicular joint, so there is pain at extreme range of motion. Acromioclavicular joint, same, the pain is at the extreme range of motion. Now the humeroulnar joint, here the flexion is more limited than extension. Then in the radiohumeral joint, the flexion is more limited than extension, extension is more limited than supination, and then the last one that is least limited is pronation. Now in proximal radio ulnar joint, supination is more restricted than pronation. In distal radio ulnar joint, there is pain at extremes of rotation. At wrist, there is flexion and extension which are equally limited. Now trapezio metacarpal, so abduction is more limited than extension. MCP and IP that are metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints, here the flexion is more limited than extension. Now spine and other joints. In temporomandibular joint, opening is restricted, occipito joint, extension and side flexion equally limited, cervical spine, side flexion and rotations equally limited and then we have extension that is less limited. And this pattern is followed by thoracic spine and lumbar spine as well. Now in SI joint, symphysis pubis and sacrococcygeal joints, so there is pain when the joints are stressed. Understanding capsular and non-capsular patterns in joint movement is crucial for accurate physical examinations and effective treatment plans. By recognizing these patterns, healthcare providers can better address the underlying issues, causing restrictions and offer targeted interventions. Next time you evaluate joint movements, pay attention to subtle differences between capsular and non-capsular patterns to provide optimal care for your patients. And that wraps up today's video. Feel free to ask any questions related to this topic in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any new videos. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and share it with your friends. See you in my next video. Until then, take care.